Hello, Internet friends. My name is Beanie Bay. Welcome back to more Elden Ring, Shadow of the Urge Tree, but I'm bad. We are in Midras Mance, which is deep inside the abyss. We're going to keep exploring and finish this up, I would imagine. And there's the lad right there. And we're going this way. Not sure how much bigger this place is in comparison to the outside trying to figure out how to get in here. Oh, that's right. We slapped, so. No. Try down. Hmm. Should I, though, or should I try up? Because up looks also like a thing, even though there are so many books here. It's too many books. How many books is too many books? This might be too many books. They're also all burned. Well, well, there's that. Likely too high up. Hmm. Hmm. Is that a... That looks like awkwardly way too much light coming in from the outside. I guess we're jumping. Oh, okay. I could have jumped a little later. Big runes. Big chungus. Big runes and big chungus. We're down here now. Go back over here. I don't think there's anything we missed when we were on top of the bookshelves. Maybe a dingus or two. They're going up. <clears throat> oh, we're casting spells, are we? Well, we were casting spells. So where is... Oh. Who's the lady? First off door. Is this the shortcut? I'm assuming this is the shortcut back to the main. It is indubitably. So who's the lady? Oh, double hidden path ahead actually correct messages hmm kind of want to go the other way first though considering that might be that's feels like it's a direct path towards we looked over the balcony so what else is over here you're gonna cast on me i'm gonna cast on you yeah well One of us won that exchange. Swollen grape. So you can't actually get up there. Oh, so there's that that passageway through the doors to go there. Yeah. Most likely. There's no way of getting up there from here. That didn't connect enough to there. You can't make that jump. I'm assuming this bookcase is going to move. Yep. This bookcase is going to move. It's on tracks. Just got to find the lever for it. Visions of Sending Gate. I don't know if that's the proper emo for that. Oh, no, we're going there. Going a bit around the outside, around the outside, around this way. And this will take us up to that level with the big chungus. Snake, snake. Yep, I know. Big Chungus, probably near lever, moves bookcase, go back up and around, jump across, something like that. There's a lot of blood here. Oh, that's going to move the... Oh, okay. Lever will move that. Is there anything behind... Oh, people are trying to jump 
all the way over there and missing. I assume. Oh, almost fell. Oh, hello. There is something behind here, it would seem. You do want to go up as well, of course. Oh, does it go to the big chungus? So what? Is that also... Mmm, that goes at one layer higher. Hello. You know what? You're probably worth it. Can you even get out of this room? You can't even get out of this room, can you? Well, I mean, you can attack through it. I don't know why I cast other spells with the Blasphemous Blade. Oh, you're a Spirit Ash. Oh. Very good. I still think we're missing... We're missing other fragments from here. We have three spirit ash gooblies now. Be wary of ambush. You know, I can do that too. I'll be a guy behind me. Oh, to my left. Just too much damage. Ah, wicked sort, liar, oh liar. Yeah, that doesn't look like an illusory wall. It's not blocked in enough, I guess. This lab has got very forward bloodborne vibes. Just need some eyeballs in a jar and we're there. Oh! Upstairs. Upstairs Grace. I guess we'll have to go back to the room and jump across, but we do have Oh my. Hmm. That's a bit of a jump. We have here grapes. Another spirit ash. Okay. So what room are we in now? Oh, is a shortcut? Oh well, we have to go back up anyway. I thought that was actually a ladder. I need to kick down the ladder for the shortcut to get to the grace room. Okay. Sorry about those. The rune symbol on my compass, by the way. That's the runes I lost to a winter lantern. Sorry, a frenzy lantern. They are of no consequence. They were all lost in the name of science. Now the question is, does this just go to stuff or is this actually the way to go? Oh, there is a dead body over here. That's quite the jump. Oh, is this the woman? I'm going to assume this is the woman in the picture. Yeah, Nanana's torch. Nanaya's? Nanaya's torch? Nanaya. Offer chaos. All the more. Ah, ruin. Yeah. Nanaya's torch. So you just, it's literally just a torch. But it causes madness buildup, as you might imagine. A torch made by attaching a dying flame of frenzy to a small spinal column. Like you do. Anyone ever makes their torches out of spinal cords, anyone? Just these folks? In a distant land, an age long past, was born a man who failed to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame. All that remains of him is cradled gently by Nanaya. Oh, so that's that man's spinal cord and a 
Frenzy Flame. Hold the torch out in front and spit out Frenzy Flame. Afflicts those caught in the area with the effect of madness, along with the user themselves. The skill will continue for as long as the button held down can be used while moving. That is cool. As a normal torch, it does not build up frenzy. Just when you hold it down. I mean, if you want to do more frenzied flame stuff, that's kind of neat. Hmm. I don't think I've used like any torches my entire playthrough so far. I don't think I've, I've put on a torch ever, even though it's better than your your waistband lantern, that's for certain. So I guess now you would go here so you'd fight this chunky monkey if you didn't already. Now we can go up and we can go in here and send down the ladder that I forgot to moments ago. Bonk. All right. Basically just connects the front and that sound to hit. <clears throat> oh, we already here. Oh, I guess we're already here. Well, okay then. I think I might leave that on just to give me a little more time with uh, with getting hit by Frenzied Flame. And then, I don't know. I don't really want to use this. I think I might just bonk him. <laughs> I could use my axe. I don't know what kind of move set he's got to have or what he's weak against. So I might just bonk him. Or we could use the, the staff. He's our new weapon. I want to try out the new Spirit Summon as well. I want to summon these two see what, what they're like. They might get blasted by Frenzied Flame and immediately die, but you know, such as it is. Lord ahead, all the more, offer death. I am assuming there's going to be a cutscene with this man, so I'm not sure my buffs will last with the cutscene, but just in case. Hello. Depths of your foolishness. Oh. Not what I was expecting. I assume I have to beat him up. Now cutscene. Hmm. Gotcha. Enough. I have endured more than enough. Is that necessary? I ask you forgive me, dearest Nanaya. Brutal. Nathan explosion approved. Do it.
I love it. It's so cool. Okay. Oh, wow. They are very aggressive, that's for sure. It's really neat. Ow! And the angle on that. It's got special frenzied flame arcs. Ooh, hello. Ooh, this weapon's like a switch blade. Or a switch sword, rather. That's cool. Oh, damn. I didn't expect me to stun him there, so. Oh! Oh, you know what? I, ex yep. Okay. Quite a lot. Now I'm going to have to worry about the uh, load screen, though. I can just puff up and go in. I don't need to summon them. I just need to see that they, they felt like pretty good. This is not a monster mash kind of boss, so I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, it's always this phase one. Oh, that kind of ruins it. Kind of ruins the, the pre-buff, huh? I guess you get to watch the cutscene every time. Okay. That doesn't hit me a second time. I figured that would actually hit me. Oh, it's like a Scarlet Ionia, but for Frenzied Flame. He's copy me? Oh, good God! Okay. I didn't see that before. Oh gosh. I think that double hit me, I think. Yeah, like a big double hit. Like he does like a slash slash, because I thought I had that. Okay. The clarifying horn definitely helping. I don't know. I don't know if I want to use the barbed spear on him or not. Or if I want to change my... Well, my flask is all damage. The fact that there is this, like, little phase beforehand is a little strange. It's always this phase one. I guess I can go grab my runes during it. I don't have to worry about during the fight. Depths of your foolishness! <laughs> I guess I can try to get my buffs up right before the, right before the transition. Yeah, it's as much as you can get, I guess.
He's letting me buff. Oh, a quick... I think it's a light greatsword moveset. Because of the, uh, the poke. The switch right here. I don't know if I can get away from this. Like the speed at which that lands. Oh, that wasn't the explosion one. Oh, wow. Okay. The damage per swing is pretty bonkers considering my defensive stats. Pretty bonkers. I feel like I can kind of just rush him though. I'm going to go... Because this will do non-physical. So the fire damage and stuff. I mean, this just helps me have enough time on the frenzy. I think I might just bonk him with my sunflower. <laughs> yeah, it's the play. The depths of your foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, that was faster than I thought. Damn. Yeah, that's quick. The shockwave is super delayed. Oh, he poises through my attack too, huh? Damn it. There we go. I'm not hitting that button game, please. Oh God. Yeah, 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 yeah. face remembrance of the lord of frenzied flame but that's me yeah, that was pretty good i was hoping for a stagger break earlier but i remember i don't have the uh my crystal tier isn't set to the the stagger break poise break additional because I haven't used the sunflower in a while. All right. This boss is a nightmare for you? Really? Oh. Well, that only took me three. 
I do just kind of live and then skull at Ioni, I skull at Rot, kill stuff after a little bit of time, but chaos, except Lord. It was, um, I mean, I could have one phased with the spirit summon right off the, right off the rip, but I did not. I didn't resummon the ladies on that next go around. Remembrance of Midra, Lord of Frenzied Flame, hewn into the Shadu Tree. What a cool model. As the golden barbs inflicted eternal agony upon him, Midra held fast to, to Nanaya's entreaty. Endure. The word was a curse. So the crazy sword sticking out of his body... I guess kept him focused on that pain instead of the frenzied flame. Is that how that works? I don't know if that's how that works, but what does the remembrance give? I wonder what does the remembrance give? That might also be the whole, so this wasn't like a full on legacy dungeon then, because that really didn't take a ton of time. It was more like just a, a catacomb kind of dungeon situation going on. Is this too far? That'd be kind of funny. Eh, that's good. Does the ghost say anything different? Nope. Does not. So now, um, I don't really want to record this we're going to do a live edit i need to figure out if this path up here is a bridge that takes you somewhere to something because i was told there are other fragments in this area and because i'm getting to that point right now where every single finding every single one is going to be important to not obviously not missing something because it may very well get to the point where I miss one thing and I'm like, oh good, I missed one. I missed one or two and I have to go back and figure out and find where they are and that's going to be a whole thing. So I could also just double check locations so that I'm not running around like a dingus. I think it's better to, to go and show than to run around. Yesterday we ran around so much in that episode because I was trying to find, these guys have blood, which is so weird. Oops. I think there's other bodies growing the Frenzy Winter Lanterns, I think. So let me double check something real quick. I'm going to look at this area specifically, just this area, because I just want to know if the other fragment is there. So that I'm not running around like a complete nincompoop like I was yesterday. Because we were. We definitely were. Let me zoom down here. And let me get this. Okay. No. All right. That's helpful. It does not look like an actual path. I thought it did look like one yesterday a lot, but it does not. So it's here. Not up this thing. Now, if it's here and it actually is up something, then we'll have to see. We have to go north and sneak by the Frenzy Lantern to not engage it. I did defeat my fair share of them. Okay, see? So my pillar is up there, so that is a thing. All right. So now it is about finding the way up because you can see my pillar of blue light right there. 
that is the way to get up. Or that, that is at least up on the pillar, or this little plateau area my sword's pointing at backwards. Oh, I looked for it for so long yesterday, and I don't know if I didn't find anything. Well, all right. I'm going to see what I can find. And see if I can figure this out without taking too, too long. But I was watching in the archive. This would be just an edit like this. Ready? <gasps> see? Okay. Uh, I figured it out. It, there's no up. The up doesn't exist. I, I ran around, beat up a bunch, a uh, couple more lanterns, and there's no up. So it's just, if you, it's hard to tell. It's this little gully right here between these two. And you go up here and then you can jump up on top of this ledge. You can just walk in, but there's a whole bunch of horn scent dinguses. So that's, that's where I am right now by the horn scent dingai. But the fragments should be right there. So I normally don't look stuff up. If it's all a blind playthrough. Like in my original playthrough, because we were so late in doing it all, I was looking up like items and paths to go, even though I still did everything. I went everywhere, did every single boss, picked up every little item. Apparently not every single item. I have found one or two talismans I didn't pick up, which I just go back immediately to the lands between and be like, oh, it's right here. I just missed it. <laughs> there that is. Nice, nice, nice. Now, is that three from this area? It is. Okay. So that moves us to 17. It was a 17, 18. Getting there. But in this case, because this area has no torrent and the exploration is very slow, I figured it best to just... Just uh, forego the pain of me running around trying to figure out if there is an upward path and there isn't. It's just right around here. So that should be everything from this section. And now I know I got everything from this section because I exhaustedly looked around for it. But I also think that's the whole abyss. Hmm. I was surprised. It's a little kind of empty. It has to have some cool mobs. Like forcing you to parry is interesting. But they're like a stealth mini game, so if you don't want to parry, you don't have to. Although it was suggested to me just to get the regular buckler and put carry and retaliation on it. You can also do golden retaliation. That's a wider parry in case you're not lined up properly with your with the, the lantern you're fighting. But they're only in like those four sections. They're, they're, they're down here. Right here. Right next to me. And then there's two over here. That's where they are. So, yeah. I did forget what I put this chest here. Oh, I was marking things that I had looted. Yeah, yeah, we got the cookbook there, so we're good. I think that's everything, though, because this is just set dressing behind the manse. We're good. We did aliens. Let's go back and look at what the remembrance turns into. It's frenzied flame, so one would think incantation. Does it like? Is it a sword and a spell? Maybe it's a sword and a, a spell. Maybe. Any equipment? No. Okay, yeah. It's the Great Sword of Damnation. Hmm. Cool. Cool. Golden greatsword that once pierced the body of Midra, master of the manse. Used for the horn scent in the execution of a damnation like no other. The barbs that pierce the victim from within wind greatly around the blade. Golden crux is the unique skill. It is uh, strength faith. A little bit of dexterity. Leap up and skewer foe from overhead. If successful... The weapon's barbs unfold to excruciate from within. Uh, else, additional inputs release barbs in the area. There is something of the golden order in the sight of those fixed upon this crux. 
there is something of the Golden Order in the sight of those fixed upon this crux. It doesn't actually do... This version does not do frenzy damage. It just does fi uh, holy damage, sorry. Which isn't even... Oh, it's not even fire? It's holy damage. So I guess getting it away from Midra is... No longer frenzy flame in, in enhanced then. Okay. And then Midra's flavor frenzy. Incantation in praise of Midra, Lord of Frenzied Flame. Summons an apparition of the Lord's head to spew frenzied flame. Is it the crazy like pew 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 laser beam he did? This incantation can be used while in motion. The apparition will remain for as long as the input is held. Oh... This sounds like it's going to be like what the tower does in that one valley where it's just pulsing frenzied flame and you hold it. The Lord of Frenzied Flame shall take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse, all melted away. Yet Midra, like others before him, was too weak to become a lord. This might be... Weird that it's a Golden Order implement when taken out. This might be a dupe. This might be a dupe and try these both out. It's 41 faith and it's frenzied flame and it's a channeled spell and it's probably going to be bad. But we could go dupe that real quick. Could go be a quick a dupey dupe. Um, I don't... I didn't actually write down where the dupe here was. Where was the dupe coffin at the northern section. I don't remember where it was. Because I know I've used one already. Did I, I use this one? Or did I use the one outside of the... I think I used the one outside the cathedral. Let me go use this one real quick. This might be a, a duplicate and, and try out stuff. Because they're both things that I would use in my build. So let's go give it a, give it a whirl. It's a dupe. Trust you on that. Oh, really? Right, I do have two more somber stones. I haven't done a whole bunch of... I've watched like one rusty video. No, two rusty videos about spells. I watched the overview that Vadi put out. And then I watched another video or two about weapons. But I don't remember seeing this weapon in any of the videos. <laughs> So, there are over a hundred new weapons, so not all of them are going to be bangers, but... Oh, so did I, I use this one? Okay, so I used this one already. Let me check the one outside of the cathedral. It's in the water. The weapon Ash of War is just mean. Mm, okay. We can go, we can go give it a try. Yeah, she's no longer here. Uh, which side was the... The duplicator on? Although I think I still have some duplications from the base game. But I don't know if you can use those on these. I haven't went back and tried to see if you can duplicate... Remembrances at the... The turtles. You can? Oh, okay. Oh, didn't get this before. The cookbook action. I'm gonna aggro every freaking mannequin, aren't I? I forgot what side of the cathedral. Right in the back. There it is, right there. Hello, turtles. We Okay, we can use one. Look at all the remembrances. Woo! So how many have we killed in the DLC so far? One, two, three, four. We got five, six, seven, eight. So we have two left. Or is it... Uh, yeah, I guess technically I've killed one extra with Bale. But he's not a remembrance. It's the Super Dragon Heart. Which is basically a remembrance of a different name that you turn to a different place, right? It's the same damn thing. So... 
we've got two left so it's is it the centipede the rot lady this game's new quaylog i don't know where that is and then it's just radon at the end well i guess the the duo hmm Okay. All right. Well, we'll duplicate the remembrance of the Lord of Frenzied Flame. So that one is used. That one is used. I think I have one up here then. I just don't know where it is. I don't, I don't know where it is. I explored that area pretty thoroughly. I didn't run by it. So it's probably going to be up on a cliff somewhere. Get some runes on us so we can just upgrade. Let me get the sword. And then we get the spell. Thank you. And we will swap on the spell. I'm assuming it takes two spell slots if I had to guess. I'm assuming it's a it's a twofer. It's a twofer. Okay. Well, uh, Malakaths don't need that right now, I guess. All right. So we need anything else on for anything. Wrath from afar is fun though. That's good. Now let's uh let's swap on this big old great sword of damnation. Now the one thing I just noticed. Yeah, it's still the same moveset, it's still standard pierce. I can put it to plus nine, no prob. It's always about if I take it to plus ten. That's always the uh that's always the is it worth taking to plus ten? Since the one through nine stones are infinite, but I only have two sombers left. It does gain eleven and nine. Not great. It gains a lot of physical. 18 and 12. So it, it leans more physical than faith. Yeah, C scaling. That would make sense. So I'm not actually very strength forward. This would be a weapon that would unlock better in New Game Plus when I would boost my strength up. Versus right now, I'm just trying to put my faith to 80. And then I don't know where it's going to go after that. Because I don't know how many more levels I'm going to get overall without rune farming. Definitely would be a weapon that would scale better with more strength investment versus faith investment. So we'll see how that works out. The test I did with the... The test I did with the... Uh, I can't think now. My brain broke. I forgot what it's called. The, po the spear I was just using. I put the barbed staff spear to 10. It's an A faith, not a strength scaling weapon. And it's a faith scaling weapon that also deals bleed and is super unique in that regard, I feel. Uh, I did upgrade the, the Naginata. I'm going to use this in a little bit. I put the, uh, the flame blast attack on it. All right, so let's see how this thing kabonks, shall we? Is it a great sword? Is it a heavy follow up? Or is it just the same skill follow up? What's the follow up press? 
But it's the same. I just hit the same skill button. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. Who's yelling at me? Yeah, all right. It's basically a double hit. Like, look at the damage. It hits for... Oops. The 1,500. Yeah, so 15, 1,600. And then I think the follow-up attack is the same. Basically. A little stronger because it scales with my faith higher than my strength. Okay, that's still almost 4,000 damage if it was fully upgraded with one use. On these dinguses, anyway. How far is the AoE range? Because you have to hit something with it. Wow. All right. Pretty good. Has a bit of AOE. I don't know what the movement value on the knockup is. Can I just do it without hitting something? Okay, you can. I wonder what the actual ratio is. We'll go to 17 here. So our damage is going to go up a little bit, but don't forget. We already knew what it was beforehand. It's all about also just finding a ratio of what hits harder. So if I wanted to commit to it, I have to use the follow-up attack. Now, the spell... Now, it builds up madness on me real fast. It also costs a ton of mana. Not sure about that. If I put on... Because you kind of have to wear stuff that increases your... Your ability to use Frenzied Flame. Big AoE spell. Not great on single target because all the bolts just fly off all over the damn place. Interesting AOE potential. Like, considering the mob also just walked right at me and didn't care. Really small range, too. Okay, the sword is definitely way better than the spell. But look at how much Frenzy Flame that built up on me. And that almost took all my mana. Very interesting. You probably have to play into the Frenzy Flame stuff. Wear the right armor. And... Probably double up. Since it's a charged spell, you're, you're charging it. So, I wonder if Godfrey affects it. Probably wearing both of the canvas talismans. Would be good. Because you need to really make it do a good bang for your buck. You could combine it, of course, with the Age 1's Exaltation. So you can increase your attack power once you get inflicted with Madness. Because you can't really do that in PvE. Enemies just kind of like take damage and nothing happens. So you have to basically inflict it upon yourself, survive the stun, and then you get the damage buff. Which is pretty bonkers. PvP, maybe? Maybe PvP. Which again, everything in this game is sort of made to do both things. But that is, uh, whoops. That is a strange one. I wish you could move spells and just like scoot them so I could keep them in the right order.
We haven't thrown black fire in a while. You know what? Bring back the oldie but a goodie. Even though the multi-layered rings of light is probably just a better spell. <laughs> it's probably just a way better spell. Okay. Sword. Thumbs up. Spell. Unsure. Not in, not entirely sure what I feel about with the uh, the spell. But it's still just incantations, right? So it's not really worried about it too much. Okay. A little bit of a reprieve there. Now I guess we're moving. Hmm. Did I have anything else that I hadn't explored yet? I don't know if I went all the way up on the hinterland side over here. The northern side. Because you ride down, and then I went over the bridge. Or you ride down, and we went up to the shaman village. So I gotta check up here real quick. And then after that, I think we're moving on. Yeah, the spell gives Eye of Sauron vibes when you use it. It does. Well, the spell does... So there's a tower in the base game in that valley that you have to run up to and get behind the rocks. And it's the it's the Eye of Frenzy that, like, grows and shrinks. And when it shrinks really small, you can run. So it's essentially that, but with hit registration. I thought it was going to be just like an aura of inflicting damage around me. I think it may have been even a better spell if it just did an aura. Because having to... It's like a cone in front of the player. And each individual hit has to hit something. So it could be really strong on large targets. Like a dragon, for example, so that a lot of the tendrils hit. But it's also just the problem that Frenzy doesn't do anything in PvE. I don't know why it doesn't have a little micro stun if it procs. But there's like no madness tables for enemies. They just didn't do it. It's for players. When you get madness, you get like the ah, 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 the stun. But for enemies, they don't do anything. They just take damage. But it would be neat if, 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 if Frenzy broke poise like you would be able to break poise with physically, that could be a neat synergy with it. But I don't think it really does any of that. It would be iconic. Yeah, I don't know. Still a one thing. I mean, that's what like the Convergence mod does for for Elden Ring here. Oh, can you know, I actually not get up there. Is that all nothing? Is there nothing? No oh, I go the other way, I think. But that's why you give give the Convergence mod team some time and they will. Uh... I mean, it's going to be a while, but I've played some Elden Ring Convergence. And it adds like classes and set bonuses and all these different like really kind of intuitive systems that you're like, oh, yeah, that should be in the base game. Some are a little too strong, so it just comes with a with a player made mod. But I wonder if they would do stuff like that where Frenzied Flame would be big on stance breaking. Because the only other real stance breaking spell is like the new nail nail glint stone sorceries and the bestial sorceries the rocks and the feathers because they're physical spells but I think frenzied flame if you build up the frenzied flame bar on a target you should just break their stance they fall to the ground is a bear hello mr. bear Hello, lots of sheep. There's so many sheep up here. Okay, what's up here? Hippo, maybe? Maybe hippo? Some rams? Ma ram you. Okay, bunch of bears. Just a bunch of bears, that's it? Oh, some bear poop.
Some bears and some bear poop. We gotta beat up the bears. They, they could be important. They could turn into something. I don't know. But it's a long time to commit. Definitely has a long commitment to stay down there and, and poke the ground, basically. It's just bears and bear shit. Okay. Yeah, we got this cookbook a moment ago. Hefty magic pot. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're telling me. That's where you use the, the fireflies. Okay. Is there really nothing up here of note? Just a place to farm bear poop? Oh, it's the horn poop, whatever. Gorgeous view ahead, but no item ahead. Sunflowers. Rare materials. A lot of them, too. My God. And a bear. And more bears. Arrgh. I can do that, too, see? Hmm. All right. Nothing up here. These are regular bears. Just regular bears. Hmm. Not every place needs to have something crazy in it, but just a place like where the scorpions are to farm for scorpion livers, the new pickled necks, I guess. This is an area to farm if you're doing, uh, if you need beast parts and stuff. Gold fireflies. Hmm. The bears don't turn anything crazy. Bear turning into a rune bear. There's a blood stain there, though. Is the Elder Ring community okay? Okay. I think that was my last little spot of exploration. So we have here, which this could be that boss I just talked about. It looks like a boss room. Like there's like a spot in the middle and then it's just a bunch of walls. Additionally, she could be here. Which might be possible as well. It's like a boss room from above. But to get to here, this whole area is way high. You cannot scale this mountain anywhere. So probably maybe a drop down somewhere along these walls to get to this section where the shrimp are. Other than that, I think we're going to the plateau. We are going to, I would assume, the second to last zone. Now, I think once we unlock the last zone, I will start doing the the checklist for fragments. Because, not because I'm like a baby about it and I want to make the game easier. Wah, Elden Ring is hard. I mean, considering I just came off of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth hard mode platinum trophy run. Melania took me three and a half hours. Like three, three and a half hours, give or take, with some theory crafting and talking and changing my build up around, stuff like that. Hardest boss I've fought in this game so far, bar none. The next has been Rolana, actually. And then Senesax, the ancient dragon up at, at the uh, peak. That's been the hardest I've ha had so far. I know the last boss in this game, in this DLC, is going to be very difficult, as you might imagine. I have heard tales of people taking an hour to eight hours to multiple different play sessions between days like they like stopped playing and they came back to it later i don't want the run to take super long and it's the last boss of the game so i should be at 20 and 10. you should be at maximum power allowed for the dlc so i would like to make sure i'm at that point because Three and a half hours on Melania is one thing. But I'm not making videos that long anymore just because they're not the same format as they used to be. 
those videos were usually three to four hours long. And I mean, if you enjoyed watching them and put them on in the background or whatever, then tuned in and out now and then that's fine. But I, I try to make these now a little more watchable, digestible chunks that have a point. They have a, a start and a stop. And when you watch that, it's just, you know, I, I get something is accomplished every episode. Oh. This is not even on the map at all. I guess it kind of is. If I were to do like a three and a half hour long boss fight. After a certain point, it's just the get good moment kicks in and you're just waiting for the person you're watching to finish and just kill the boss. Yeah, I knew it was almost too far. The Bond Stone and the Antiquity Scholar's Cookbook of Tier 2. What the fliff of fluff is a Bond Stone? Also, where the hell am I? This makes Sprite Stones. A, rec a, a record of crafting technique left by the Hornscent academics who studied the ancient ruins of Rao. And a bond stone. It just looks like a weird sperm. A large burrow stone studded with a perfectly white gem said to be the polished form of a special kind of crystal. A ritual implement made to control explosions of spiritual power used to cause a spiritual explosion consuming the sprite dwelling within the sprite stone. Bonds with the sprites were made to be broken. You can only carry one. You can only carry one and it's not craftable. You can make sprite stones, but not bond stones. Sprite stone uses the spirit calculus and horns and the row burrow. Use FP to release a spirit that slowly hones on enemies. According to the records left by Hornscent scholars, there was also contrivances known as bond stones that could manipulate the movement that the sprite manipulate the moment that the sprite vanishes. For only being able to carry one, is it actually any good? I guess because these are just a regular 10, 10 stack consumable. But like, what the heck? Is this just some weird lore item or is it actually like worth throwing at someone? But how much damage could it even do? Seek door. Do I have to teleport out of here? Oh, it's reusable. Oh, duh. It does say you're freaking reusable. I'm stupid. It is tiny. What tiny text the very top underneath the name.
guess that's unique, but like... That's a very weird item combination. That feels very PvP-ish. Like it's a, it's a, what do they call them? Push items or, or pressure spells? Kinda? If you don't use the bond stone, the spirits will just detonate after a period of time anyway. Weird. Very strange item. It didn't do terrible damage, like a thousand plus damage to that scorpion. But it also was incredibly slow, had a very slow opening wind up, like letting it go moment. So. I don't... Stuff like that is always really weird. Like, it's cool. I guess maybe in the lore it's cool. But... It does always come down to how usable something is. Be wary of up. Ow. Baby scorpion! Baby scorpion! Baby scorpion! Huh. I don't... I don't know. I guess I'm just confused by like, how would you ever use that or why? <laughs> you know what I mean? If someone in PvP sees you go like... During that whole animation that they're locked into it, you're just jumping on their butt and chunking the crap out of them. You know what I mean? Like, so like, what, what's the very strange lever? No door ahead, but lever though. I don't know where I am. I just, I'm just exploring, right? I'm underneath this whole area again, because there's no uppy downy map. There he goes again, Bay talking about the uppy downy map. It is, it is striking to me still that there's no uppy downy in in the land of shadow am i exploring this area backwards i feel like i'm exploring this area backwards because I, I jumped into it probably <laughs> i think i'm i think i'm here in reverse it's fine Oh, fire sprite stones. So now we're going to get elemental versions. Of all the sprites, the fire sprites are said to be the most boisterous in nature. Yeah, I don't. It's such a strange little thing. Unless they're used for like unlocking or opening something. Or maybe an upcoming encounter they're super strong at. But not only do you have to find the control item, you have to craft the other item, which requires a cookbook. And then you have to like time where it is in its trajectory to blow it up. Otherwise it might just fully miss. We're both bad. I think of setting up combo detonations between items and spells. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like stuff like that. I guess what they're called in PVP parlance is, is pressure spells. It's like the carrion swords that are over your head kind of a deal. Spirit Ash. It's when you cast the spells of your head, 
they're gonna fire off a delayed rate or like the spirit summons like the little spirit blobs float around you i freaking see you up there you piece of crap why don't you come down here oh son of a i asked for it we're both bad get terrained also get stick bugged also get teabagged i guess i saw you sitting up there now if i would have come in from the other direction they would have jumped down and probably spun on my head but like like they do this freaking horn scent dancer butt cracks that the one the first one you encounter absolutely bodies you try up mm. okay so i have to run along the route maybe I have no idea where I am. Okay, so what, where am I? Where does this entrance start? Uh-huh. Okay. But I think I explored this place backwards and got the item you're here to get anyway. Unless there's more if I climb on this route. Little outdoor, underground, indoor dungeon. <coughs> Little somber nine. Take it. Better than buying them. They are expensive, like 20,000 runes for one, which again, I don't know which place is better for rune farm because this area over here, you at the bonfire right here up at Fingerstone Hill, there is a patrol right out in this area of two large finger creepers and then I don't know, like 30 small ones. So you can just go here. AOE blah, blah, blah. reset AOE blah, blah, blah. <laughs> similar to what you can do at Moog's palace with the Albanarics. And it was pretty similar. It was like 50,000 runes just for clearing them out once without using the talisman or a golden pickled foul foot or the gold horn thingy, I guess either one. Hello. So probably both similar, like 75,000 runes for each quick clear. If you're going to farm runes for whatever reason, farming runes is usually always fine for upgrading weapons, but eventually you just get to like 340,000 right now. Isn't terrible for doing that loop, but that loop then requires you to do it five times. And then eventually it becomes even more than that, you're looking at seven times, nine times. Even if each clear only takes you two minutes. Oh God. You're still farming runes for 15 minutes to get one level. Oh, hello. Hello, shiny potman. Spirit calculuses. Oh, hole in the wall. I see. Another door. Behold door. Door ahead. Oh, I can just open it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, once you get to... It's 
too expensive to level, that's when you're just doing, um, you're just doing New Game Plus at that point. What's the... Came down that staircase. What's the first New Game Plus rune modifier? Because each each tier of New Game Plus up to seven is just like a rune modifier on how many everything drops. Do we know what that modifier is? Probably listed on the chart if it's like 30 or 40 percent or whatever. Angry S Cargo. New mob. Oh, they're these things with a shell. You can fight these. They don't have a shell. So they're snails? Snail lizards? Sliz sliz sn lizards? That's tough. Say snail and lizard at the same time. Sna lizards. All right. Oh, you can be mounted in here too. Enemy ahead. In short, likely horse. What? Definitely lead to pierce. Try horse. Oh, there's a uh, spear. This could be access from a spirit spring as well. Or no, I don't know. This area, I just, I'm just roaming around, baby. I'm in the runes of Rao. I don't know where I am. Big indoor outdoor dungeon. It's been a while since I did it, but I would say it's like 1.5 X. So 50% more. Does it go up by 50% each time you go up to plus seven? Hmm. Okay. Horse time. I'm in the freaking mines of Moria at this point. Fly people? Definitely tankier fly people. Dude, where all of this is not mapped. I'm underneath this plateau. I don't know where the hell I am. Precious item ahead that way. Okay. According to the wiki, it's 550% but they have a lot of bad information on their wikis. Oh, specifically Fexture Life's. Try target lock. Is it a scorpion? Who's up there? Hello? Who's up there? Are you a big scorpion? Hello? Are you a dancer? literally cannot see anything i hear like crying ghosts first off up and then try target lock hidden half ahead oh my god there's a lot of deaths no my fellow blasphemous blade user what killed you <laughs> just hit l2 my guy what the hell is up here hello Oh, it's just a flyman. What? 
Are people dying because they're missing the jump? Or is the flyman knocking them off? And they're dying to the grapple. The fine crucible feather talasman. A talisman fashioned from the from thin feathers that embodies the aspects of various creatures. Said to have grown on the human body long ago. Improves back steps, but increases damage taken at all times. Oh, these are the new crucible talismans. There's a bunch of these. And there's a meta one that gives you all of the effects or something. But you, you take like 15% more damage or whatever. Horn scent view the crucible as sacred for the refinement. Wrought through its evolutionary gifts. Most prominently... They are tangled horns. So it improves back steps. Which I rarely, rarely, rarely ever use. It's this. No iframes, but it's all about positioning if you know where the attack is going. So is it like a noticeable back step improvement? How does it improve them, I wonder? Does it give frames? Maybe it gives iframes? I have no freaking idea. Not a damn clue. All right. This is a long way down. You can't find any other source, but there are people saying that you get a 550% increase and then a 6% increase each level after that. Oops. So the 6% seems kind of useless. But it's all just multiplicative, right? At that point. It's really that... That's a wild rune increase in comparison to the base game. That's crazy. Hello. Really? I was in the other animation, but that's okay, I guess. Oh my god. There's like a lot of you. I'm dead. All right. Someone was shooting spells at me from like off screen. All right. Probably could have mashed a little harder there, but now I'm like, I don't even know how far away I am. Where am I? At the very beginning. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy, ooh, boy, ooh, boy. I did open all the doors. If the doors open, so I should have just ride straight down and just go through the doors. Wow. This is a, some old school Dark Souls run back right here. Spicy. Yeah, it definitely wants you to level and just get to other other builds and things. Because the, the, the base game, you're kind of not locked in. You kind of got to make a choice. You obviously get plenty of ways to respec. You get plenty of larval tears, but... Oh, you respawn, huh? Oh, crap. I'm not fighting you, sorry. Is the wrong way. Or maybe not. I don't know.
I can't believe the sparkly guys respawn. I guess these sparkly ones don't have anything after the first time. Okay, this door is open, so we go past the snails. And we do a little bit of this. Alright. I guess we're not that, not that far. Oh yeah, this is right here. So which one was casting freaking spirals on me? Just one that was just just in the oh, you were. I got hit by the spiral and then I got knocked over and then chomped on by Flyman. And that got me good. Mm hmm. Walking up the route. Praise the fat coin purse. So big rune up there. Big Rooney Toonie. Oh, thank you. Big tier seven. Nice as high as we go. Mm. Hello. Also, hello, a cross of Mikola. We haven't found one of those in forever. It's been quite a while since we had one of those. Battle? <gasps> this is that Crucible Knight lady. She's like the first Crucible Knight or something crazy. This is a boss fight. Is it is a this is a Jebate boss fight? At least there's a res point here, but Yeah, you son of a bitch. Now, Crucible Knight. Not sure what their resists are like, but she is going to be hitting with the big hammer. So I'm gonna go a little more loosey goosey. And go a little little fast and quick, maybe. I guess Chart of Alexander is probably fine. Um I really need to do a new game plus and get the other stacking talisman, the one that would actually synergize with this, but I don't have it. Don't have it. I don't have it. They're mostly just resilient to magic. Mm, okay. Well, also going to be wielding a giant mace, so probably just a little slower. I wish one of these enhanced what I was doing. She's probably going to have holy damage. Might just go turtle talisman here. Probably the better way to do it. Could try to parry her. Maybe, I guess, but mm. all right, this is fine. Like, give me Frank just for the initial, so I take less damage while I'm putting up Aonia. Hello. Oh, God. 
Yep. Oh, this is just a regular crucible night. Whoa, what the? What the hell? Why are they a centaur? This is not the lady I was thinking of. It's not, not a health bar. Ow. Wow, okay. What? Holy crap baskets. All right, so it's not her. Oh, it was her. I thought she'd have a, like a boss health bar or something. That's that was Devonia. Why was her? Why was she a centaur though? How cool was that? Crucible hammer helm. Helm worn by Devonia, longest serving of the Crucible Knights. Holds the power of the Crucible of Life, the primordial form of the Erd Tree. Strengthens aspects of the Crucible incantations. It is said that Devonia quested in search of the Crucible's origin and departed from the lands of the Erd Tree alone. Well, it was here. Wasn't the primordial Crucible from the Land of Shadow? I think it's something we, we learned about. Look at that helmet, though. Bonk, bonk. Huh. A centaur and a flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a big flower popping out of her chest. A big Miranda flower. Devonia's hammer. Devonia's vortex. Only a 30 strength required colossal weapon? Hmm. Great hammer wielded by Devonia. Longest serving of the Crucible Knights. Weapon forged of primordial gold. Marked by its reddish hue and inhabited by ancient holiness, a torrent of life is engraved upon the striking face. Using the power of the crucible's vor the crucible vortex, violently spin the hammer around and slam it into the ground, causing a shockwave. This skill can be charged to increase its power. Well, I can equip it and two-hand it. Oh my god. I mean, you could say that's a crucible or some people might say it's like a butthole or something, but good Lord, a little top heavy. That's that's the crucible for you. I don't know why when you're suddenly wielding a crucible weapon, you just have telekinesis because it just floats above my hand. You can still use it without the holy damage with no FP. This doesn't explain why her body was a weird cat minotaur. Great hammers got way better in the game as of uh, recent patches and stuff. If you do a great hammer build, you're going to have a good time. Great hammers are pretty, pretty great. They look more like the bodies of the hippos. What, the, the symbol? The symbol on the, uh, on the mace? Oh, her centaur part looked like a hippo. Uh, I'd have to go back and watch. I was expecting some like crucible music to queue up and her to get a boss health bar at the bottom of the screen. And actually be like, cause there's only like two crucible night bosses in the whole game. There's one underground. And there's the one like a catacomb somewhere. I'm surprised she didn't have a health bar. Considering it's a named Crucible Knight with a unique attack. All right. Here we are. We found our first Sight of Grace that isn't the starting one.
Yeah, that's totally Ornis. Or Ornis, the bird warrior. Although, I guess they must be a phantom because they did respawn. That's where you, if you take the teleporter early on by Castle Ensis, you get ported right down there. And you get ported to here. And there is a, um, a heavy armor talisman and then that guy. And I don't know if you would, or her, I guess, she would lay you out if you were baby urn tree level. Well, thanks for watching. If you have been watching live or if you've been watching on the archive, also appreciate you. If you want to watch more RPG or souls content, there's a lot of it. All three Dark Souls, all the DLC, Bloodborne, all the Chalice Dungeon Madness, Demon Souls, and then Tangentially Souls games, both of the God of Wars, both of the Jedi games. Obviously then Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth and the hard mode. The hard mode uh, hardest parts, I actually, as I'm recording this, will be going up online. I just can't post more than like the two videos a day and I've got Final Fantasy 14 Dawn Trail stuff going up. So I will be posting those, the hardest boss fights in that game for archival purposes because those took me... The hardest one I think took me like 13 hours over three days. It was an absolute struggle bus. But I will see you all in the next one. You're beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat>